Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Yesterday I did a Luminar Neo video. In that video I did an elaborate edit of this image. I say it was elaborate because I replaced the existing sky with a dramatic sky and I had that dramatic sky reflected in the water. And when I was done with the edit, the image didn't look like anything it looked like when I started. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. After that video posted, someone messaged me and they said that they never replace skies in their images and they were wondering how I would go about editing this image in Lightroom if I had no intention of ever replacing the sky. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to do a full edit of this image and I can't replace the existing sky. We're just going to start from scratch. We're just going to double check that it isn't edited at all. I'm going to click reset down here in the lower right hand corner. So it is an unedited raw file. So I would do what I typically do. Um, first of all, I'd make sure it's straight. If it wasn't, I'd straighten it. I make sure it's cropped the way I want it. Um, I captured it in camera pretty much the way I want it. So I'm not going to crop it. it doesn't need to be straightened. So I'm going to go to the basic tab right away. I'm going to stay with the Adobe color profile. I'm not even going to mess around there. What I'm going to do, there was a bit, a tiny bit of fog in the air. So I'm, I just jumped down right away to dehaze. This is just the way I go about doing things. The reason why I like to use dehaze early if I need to use it is because it really, um, it, it affects the tone and contrast greatly. So that if you went in and you started to adjust your highlight shadows, whites and blacks first, then went to dehaze, you're going to start to affect the contrast um, perhaps adversely from what you had adjusted it to when you adjusted highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. So I do dehaze right away if I'm going to do it. So I'll just move it to the right. And you can see how it's making the darker parts darker and the lighter parts lighter. And you can see we're getting a lot more contrast in the image. So that's why I like to do that first. Then I'll go up and I'll do highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. And the way I typically would do them, I'll take highlights down. I start to see some detail come up in the brighter parts. Um, I'll go to shadows, I'll open those up till I see some detail in the darkest parts. Then I'll get a white and black point. Uh, the way I like to do it is I hold the option key on my Mac. It would be alt key on a PC. Click on whites, the entire screen turns black. Then I'll move that to the right until I see some colors coming through. You can see there's some blue starting to pop through at the top of the image. I'll then back that off until all that color is gone. So I'm not clipping the highlights at all. Similarly for blacks, I'll again hold in the option key on my Mac, click on that black slider. This time the screen turns white. Then I'll move this to left till I see some colors coming through. You can see I got some blues, greens, and red coming through. I like to clip the shadows a bit. So that's just the way I like to do it. It gives my image, in my opinion, a lot of tonal range. I have absolute black in the image and I have almost absolute white. It's just the way I like to do it. So that's our tone adjustments that included the four sliders, highlight shadows, whites and blacks, and the day slider. And here's a before and there's an after. So not much done so far. Next, I will jump down to texture and clarity. I'll add some texture, some clarity. Then it is pretty drab. So I am going to go directly to saturation. I'm going to push that up quite a bit and try to add some color to the image. Then still working with color, I'm then going to jump down to the HSL color tab, specifically the luminance section of that tab. And this is similar to what I did in that Luminar Neo video yesterday. I want to get tonal range in the color, meaning we have just like homogenous patches of green grass. I want to try to get a little more tonal variance there. So what I do is I'll go to yellows and I'll push that up. So I'm making the brighter greens of the grass brighter. Then I'll go to green and I'll pull that down. So I'm making the darker greens darker. Now it's subtle in this image, as you can see here. So if I turn this entire HSL color tab off and on, there's like before and there's after. So if you could look right in here mainly, there's before. And there's after. You can see how it just adds a little bit of tonal variance. Now, of course, it's not just this section of the image that it's affecting. It's affecting other parts of the image as well. So you have to be careful that you're not adversely affecting 
something in the image that isn't related to what you're looking at. Like I'm really looking at the grass, but it's also affecting like this building over here a little bit. There's before and after and other parts of the image. So I just have to make sure that it's still acceptable. And to me it is. Also, the bluer parts of the sky, they're so bright up there. So I'm going to pull the blue down a little bit. So you can see how now we're starting to get some. We're starting to see the clouds that were up there. So I'm done with the HSL uh, color tab. Now, I'm going to do uh, what I did also in Neo. I just don't like these floating leaves that are in here. So I'm going to get the uh, spot removal tool. And I am going to feather it out to about 50 and we'll leave opacity at 100, and I am going to use the heel brush. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint on these and see what it does. Make sure it samples a good area. And when I say samples a good area, you see when I come off the image or go on the image how it samples over here, and I can move this around if I don't like where it's sampled. I can move it around. And you can see that did a pretty good job there. So I'll just do these very quickly. I just kind of want the the water to look like a sheet of glass, and I think that looks good. So I'm done with that. Uh, next, I'll go back uh, to uh, basic. I think everything actually is good here. Maybe I'll go to contrast and just add a bit more contrast. I, I usually don't, to tell you the truth, move the contrast slider much, but what I found, if you have an image that is hazy, because it's a bit foggy, maybe it was raining lately, or maybe it's a um, very hot day and there's a haze in the air. In this case here, it was more of a fog. Um, if you move contrast to the right, it's kind of a more subtle dehaze slider. So it'll help cut through that haze a little bit, that fog a bit. That's if, you know, assuming you don't want it there. And in this case, I don't want it there. So I move that to the right a little bit. I kind of like what it did. Now let's see what we could do with the sky a little more. So I'm going to open up the masking tools and I'm going to select the sky and make sure it does. And it did. Did all right. Did all right. It did all right. And I'm going to go to clarity. Kind of turn clarity up. Maybe turn some texture up. Starting to see some noise up there, aren't we? So we're going to go to uh, the noise and move this to the right. Try to soften that noise a bit. So, so far so good. Now I will go down to the detail and it gave me a default amount of sharpening of 40. I think that's fine. There's nothing really detailed in this image, but that noise reduction, it's at zero. So the luminance noise reduction that is. So I'm going to zoom in on the sky a little bit. Maybe I could zoom in a little more. I'm going to hold in the command key in it's a control key on a Mac and like draw a rectangle right there. So I could zoom in. You can see there's quite a considerable bit of noise. Smooth it out. That looks a lot better. I smoothed it way out. Kind of back it off a little bit. Could bring back some of that detail with the detail slider. So any detail I lost maybe in these bricks or on that uh, roof, I can move this detail slider to the right and it will tend to bring some of that detail back. Zoom back out. Now I want to uh, make sure that the sharpening is only affecting the edges of things that need to be sharpened. For example, I don't need to sharpen the sky and I don't need to sharpen the water at the bottom of the image. So I'm going to go to the masking slider and I'm going to hold in the option key on my Mac. It's all can a PC. Click down. I get an entirely white image. That means everywhere is being sharpened. Wherever white is, is being sharpened. As I move this to the right, you'll see some black come in. Wherever black appears is not being sharpened. So I only want that middle part sharpened, right? Only the edges. So we're going to move that considerably to the right. So you could see now wherever white, again, is being sharpened. So the trees, the branches, parts of the building, edges of the building are being sharpened. But the sky pretty much isn't being sharpened at all. And the water at the bottom isn't sharpened at all. So now the sharpening isn't increasing the noise. It's not enhancing the noise that was up here in the sky. So I could probably bump that up a little higher now and it will be only affecting the building. So that looks pretty good. Now, as I look at it, maybe I make, maybe I have a little bit too much contrast, maybe meaning the blacks are a touch too black. I'm going to hold in that option key again and click on the black slider. And I'm just going to back that off a touch and kind of eyeball it. 
I think that looks pretty good. So overall, that is pretty much my edit. I am going to go to effects as I typically like to do. I like to put a darker vignette, but nothing too heavy. I just, I usually like it very subtle. Uh, just my style. I know people that detest vignettes and never want them on their images. It's really optional. So I just darken the edges a little bit. It kind of pushes everyone's attention more towards the middle. What I liked about Luminar Neo, and it's the same in Luminar AI, and it, I think it's actually the same in Luminar 4, is that you could actually brighten the middle. There's a slider there to brighten the middle, and I hope that someday Adobe adds that to Lightroom because that actually works really very well. Now, I could do it. I could get um, a radial mask, so I could go up here to masking. I could create a new mask, and I could get a radial gradient, and I could draw this radial gradient like right over this middle part of the image, right? And then wherever the red is is where it's going to be affected. Then what I could do is I could just go to exposure, just brighten it up a little bit in there, just a little bit. And I could do it. It's a little more difficult, though, to do when you're working with something like Lightroom, whereas with the Luminar products, it just kind of automatically does the middle. So that's that. I mean, that's optional as well. You don't need anything like that. So that's the masking tool there. So there is my full edit of this image that I did yesterday in Luminar Neo where I replaced the sky and it looked uh, totally different than the raw file looked when I started. Here's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.